Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Colin Wilson. Welcome to our webinar tonight, or this after, late this afternoon. This webinar is all about setting the right pathway to trade through the next wave of COVID-19. So when I planned this webinar with the City of Mooney Valley, who are sponsoring this webinar, um, I uh, wasn't on the radar that today would be the day um, that, uh, that we've all got to go into stage four. So I have tweaked this webinar to, uh, to uh, make sure that we deliver a great webinar. Um, and in relation to what's going on in this pandemic, um, especially for those uh, businesses around uh, the city of Mooney Valley who uh, um, that have pretty much got to uh, work from home or or, uh, or, or shut down. So um, I hope you get a lot of this webinar and um, let me get started. Okay, so our, uh, our uh, objectives of this webinar that we're going to discuss today is number one, setting goals and objectives through this time uh, round through COVID-19. Um, we're going to talk about the people management during COVID-19, how to do that, performance management through COVID-19 and following the process and systems that you need to do and minimising your risk during this pandemic. And we are definitely in a pandemic with the shutdown that's actually uh, that's just happened. Um, I've got an upcoming webinar happening in a couple of weeks time. If you like the webinar today, I'd love you to join uh, that webinar. So I'll just go through a bit of housekeeping for you. So during this webinar, uh, everyone is on mute. Um, you will be able to uh, ask some questions, uh, which we'll do our very best to answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, also, um, this webinar is recorded. Um, everyone who is registered for this webinar will receive a copy of the webinar within the next 24, 48 hours, including the slides uh, as well. So let me get started. So first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to the City of Mooney Valley. Um, the team down there are absolutely fantastic. Um, they're doing such a great job. Uh, and you know, uh, pretty much you can see um, that they're trying very, very hard to get local residents or lo sorry, local businesses of local businesses in the City of Mooney Valley to work with one another. So I know the government grants are out there and at the moment they're not far off reopening the, uh, the government grants uh, uh, again. Um, but um, you know, if you're not part of this, uh, this subscription, I'd definitely encourage you, encourage you to, uh, to jump on board, learn and follow the business at Mooney, Mooney Valley uh, City Council, so you can see some of the upcoming events and, and what's going through. So they are there to support uh, lots of businesses, especially small businesses in the city of Mooney Valley, and uh, we're very appreciative um, for uh, for their support. Okay, so today's webinar is uh, is also going to be shared, but well, not just myself, it's going to be shared with a lady called Mayo Travesca, who's one of our HR consultants at KBA. Um, she's been in with us for well over five years and an absolute great asset to uh, to our business. And um, and uh, hello, Maya. Hello, everybody. Beautiful. So key business advisors, we've uh, we've been uh, we are a local resident. You know, uh, we're in uh, Buckley Street, uh, Essendon, and you know, our, our mission and our, our vision and purpose is, you know, is to take business from good to great. And our purpose is definitely to take our customers on a journey to help them to improve the uh, their business through all aspects of the employee engagement and performance. So I think, you know, managing staff is one of the hardest things uh, that you uh, you can do. And I definitely, uh, we do a lot to support a lo lot of local businesses with the way that they manage uh, their staff. The three main services we offer is that business advice and strategy, professional sales training, and that HR advice and support. Okay, so let me get started with the webinar. So our topic one that I'm gonna talk about today is setting goals and objectives through uh, this time around through COVID-19. And for anyone who knows who we are, you'll see that I, I, you know, I did a massive um, series of webinars of our Survive and Thrive webinars, um, which is still on our website, so people can go back and have a look at it. But one of the things I've been talking about recently over the last you know, three to four weeks is definitely how do you set that pathway um, for the next three, six, 12 months? And you know, a lot of people say, well, it's pretty hard to do that because we're in this COVID, but in many ways, if you're gonna manage staff and you're gonna you know, help drive some sort of vision or some sort of direction, I do believe that you definitely wanna create some sort of pathway. So my, the importance of setting up the right pathway for staff to follow, and that's what it's about. You know, for me, number one, it demonstrates really good leadership. So how do you do that? I think you've got to sit back and look at, well, this is the situation we're in. This is what we need to do to, to, to make sure that we, uh, that we trade through. 
it creates a pathway to follow um, to trade through this COVID-19. I think staff at the moment, there's so much uncertainty. We hear lots of bad news. So I think it's really important as a business owner or a manager to lead your team through saying, we can get through this, it's okay. Um, we've got a strategy in place, this is what we're gonna do and make sure everyone's part of that strategy. I think it provides clear direction, especially over the next three months, um, six and 12 months, but you definitely wanna put that in place and, um, and, and then you know, help people uh, understand what that direction is. To me, it keeps everyone accountable and on the same page. So if we've got some sort of plan, whether it be a one-page plan or, or uh, documented, you know, I did mine on a uh, uh, to the team with a uh, on a PowerPoint presentation and created, um, you know, this is what it's all about. Um, I think you know that's what you want to do. Just keep that drive going forward. That you know we've got to trade through this. Um, I think it's really important that you know it, it will help create better teamwork, especially with staff working remotely. And I think. You know, our business, as I said, you know, we're very strong. There's there's 10 of us in our business and we constantly hear from customers that have got unhappy staff or they're not sure what's going on. Um, and it's about, to me, it's about, well, you just got to tune in with them and stay connected with them and, and help them and direct them. I think it's really important that, you know, by setting some sort of pathway, it rebuilds that motivation, something to focus on. And I think that's the thing. How do you get through a pandemic like this? Well, to me, it's very important that, we're all focused and we have something to focus on, um, which is uh, you know, helping other customers because our customers are what, is what keeps us in business. And I think if you're really good at putting some sort of pathway in, in, you know, and lay it down in front of your team, not only are you trying to give them direction, it, it also holds you, the business owner or manager accountable to lead the team into a direction of where you want the business to go. And you know, I'll, I'll ask Maya, you know, we, we, get, you know, uh, we get two or three phone calls a day of, you know, sometimes staff just not wanting to, I don't want to do that. You know, that's what I wasn't paid to do. I, I don't want to do, I don't want to follow up these customers or I don't want to go and collect money. But, you know, we're in a pandemic and it is a way of, you know, we've got to try and help the business uh, sustain. And I think it's just maybe sometimes it's the way it's delivered and not shown the big picture that creates that. Is there anything you want to comment on that, Maya? Um, yes, Colin, specifically, I guess more about the job roles or certain job roles that they can do. We need to be mindful um, that, yes, it might be something that's out of the ordinary. I guess I like to use the term of other duties as required, um, especially during pandemic. Is something that we need to, I guess, the delivery is quite important, saying, look, I understand in this certain situation, we do have other alternative duties that you can potentially do to support the business, um, hoping that we're on the same page to do that, um, to continue the business growing. Yeah, I think it's really important. I think, you know, what's extremely important is setting those clear company goals and objectives. So for me, you know, um, you know, financial targets. Now, what's really interesting is we've had a customer say, well, how do I, how do I create some sort of financial target? We don't know what's going to happen and look what, how we're going. I said, well, if you give them no target or, or, or you're not educating them about what they need to focus on, um, then, you know, if you don't get the results, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you can't rely on JobKeeper and, and, and incentives from the initiatives from the, from the government. You've got to make sure that, you know, you've got to somehow make it work. So by putting um, some just some simple targets in, in place uh, with, with this particular customer, gave the guys something to focus on and, um, and they're executing, which I think is really, really important. I think it's also, um, you know, we've got to be realistic right now. I'm working with so many clients on looking at online opportunities. So how are you going to, uh, you know, pivot your business is the key word to create an online strategy. Some businesses are really good at it and we had it all up ready to go um, prior to this COVID-19 starting, um, where others are now on the bandwagon of doing it. And we know the city of Mooney Valley have been absolutely fantastic with the government grants that they've put out. You know, uh, we can get up to $10,000 to try and help get your business into an online, uh, um, online presence. I think it's important to break down your products and services, set your KPIs. And, you know, I like to share when I talk about video, something that we've done in the business is I've actually just reduced the KPIs. So rather than have four, you know, five, five things I want you to focus on, let's just focus on three, make it simpler, right? And, um, um, and you know, it's surprising, you know, just, just by reducing some of those KPIs, creating a bit better focus and a bit of crossover of those KPIs. So two people responsible for one, I think has been really, really good as a motivator and also um, as to help the guys, you know, to, to, to refocus on what they're doing. I think you need to reevaluate 
you know, a lot of us are doing this already, our business expenses and making some decisions based on some projects, uh, you know, projected sales. So, you know, um, and again, a client I'm working with, I said, well, we can't project our sales. And I said, well, yes, you can. Uh, you need to go back and have a look what's happened over the last three, three months, what's dropped, what's sustained, and, you know, try and come up with some sort of pattern. Because I think that's what you've got to do. You've got to find, you know, what's the pattern. Now, again, we're going into stage four. So, um, you know, I'm working with a bit of an unknown, just as many people are probably thinking about this uh, while they're on this uh, this webinar. But you've still got to stay positive, and you've still got to keep that um, that projection going because I'll, I'll tell you, it'll keep you sane. Um, I think you need to uh, look at forecasts and balance out, you know, the job keeper and other government uh, initiatives. And one of the things that I really push hard with my team come 1st of July of this year was the, just the importance of us. If we stick to our strategy and our pathway of where we want to go forward, we need to be mindful that we've got to work on a system that we're not relying on this. Now, I think it's great that the government has extended it and there, you know, there are some more um, you know, cash uh, handouts, but you can't rely on that. You've got to try and get your business to the point where um, you know, uh, we're, we're, making, we're making money knowing that this is going to reduce. I think it's important to set some key tasks and objectives for your staff to take full ownership. So, you know, I made the comment before and, you know, I want some, I want my team, I need you to own this KPI, I need you to have that conversation. And you two share this KPI, so I want you to, to hold each other accountable. It's really important you do that. And I think, you know, as a leader, you need to be in the driver's seat and lead your team on where you want them to take it. So to me, you know, in this pandemic right now, if you're a business owner out there and you're very, very reactive, um, and you're coming across that way with your team, and I'm not saying, I am saying, you are probably putting a negative vibe through the business. You've got to somehow um, be in that driver's seat and have that sheer determination and resilience that we can get through this. Okay, um, and my last third point is about, you know, setting up, having set KPIs for everyone to achieve. And I think, you know, I just explained that, giving those three KPIs. I've simplified it. People are working from home and, and I just want you to own these three KPIs each and just make it happen for us. And, um, and, and it's a good system we've got now, now working. I think um, uh, you might need to review, review your org chart and put a plan in place. And again, this is where we're doing, I'm doing a lot of work where there's a bit of restructure uh, within businesses. And typically, you know, companies that have never had that marketing presence, they're making adjustments to bring in somebody for marketing. And unfortunately, that might mean someone in the company might uh, miss out, but um, you know, that's what you have to do to uh, sometimes stay in business. I think it's important to set those individual, uh, those team and individual KPIs that links back to your company of what, what the company to achieve. So it is showing that it's all connected, you know, so this is what the company needs to achieve, this is what this department or you, this team needs to achieve and as individuals in that department or team, you need to achieve this. Make sure your staff are 100% clear on what you want them to achieve because if they're not clear and it's muddy, then you might lose a bit of productivity or give, make them confused. I think it's extremely important that you break down the KPIs for better clarity. So just make sure, and I go, I said, don't complicate things. So in a pandemic, we've seen businesses saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you need to do that. And yes, that's part of survival. But if you give good clarity, break it down. And in many ways, you know, I explained to a, to a customer, you know, uh, only this morning that, you know, we're in AFL territory here, but what does an AFL team do when they've lost their way? They just bring it back, strip it back and bring it back to basics and start rebuilding again. In many ways, you need to do that if, um, if things are not working for you. I think you need, to start, you need to ensure that your staff uh, understand what you uh, want them to achieve and, and to get their buy-in. So they're actually committed. I can do this. I will do this and I'll, I'll, help, I'll help out. And I think more collaboration and celebrate outcomes with the team is what we need to do. So we can't, we've got to somehow stop talking about what's going wrong and bring the contents of what's going right and really recognise those individual achievements. I think it's really important to, to understand that there are three types of businesses out there that are, that are that's happening. There are businesses out there that are thriving through this pandemic. There are other businesses that are, if I can say, treading water and going okay. I'd say that's what that's us, and then there, unfortunately, there are other businesses that are in a, bit, a lot of dire straits because things are just not working for them. And you know, our hearts go out to those type of people because you know that's what you don't go into business to 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 run a business that you can't open and and, and perform. 
but you need to make, do need to make some changes. So I'm going to hand this topic over to uh, Maya now. If you could take us through topic number two, Maya, that would be fantastic. Perfect. Thank you so much, Colin. So one thing that we identified, especially during COVID, is we've probably been spending a lot of time trying to work on building the business back up, but then we found that we've gone through this stage two, especially you know around the country, and it's now what do we do to stay positive, maintain strong leadership, strong culture. So um, in this particular slide, I want to talk to you about the leaders and making sure that they're leading. Um, it's important that all the leaders are on the same page with the company goals and objectives. Here I generally recommend having at least um, some meetings with the leadership team talking about, okay, what is our plan to action? What is our strategy going forward? Similar to what Colin just mentioned, thinking about the people. What is our people going to look at to support us in achieving our success and our goals? Uh, making sure that we're all working collaboratively to achieve the outcome and that they need to manage and lead their teams. So it's rather than the team talking to us about what is the plan of attack, it's that we've got the forward thinking and planning, okay, as a manager and as the leader, we know that these are the current issues where we're fumbling through the COVID safe plans, we're fumbling through our health and safety, our day to days, our sales and our financials, what are we all doing together to work with the team to achieve um, the bare minimums as a business? You want to also make sure that the team is managing up to you. So that means that if they've got questions, they know who to go to. And if you're not the right person to go um, in that instance, letting them know if I'm not the person um, that could help you in this instance, it's about going to the next person that can support you. Making sure that they play their part in, of the plan. So what is your objectives? Like Colin mentioned, your three to six, your 12 month objective, looking at how that would be sustainable. And right now we're probably focused on the now, so the current month that we're in and tackling how that's going to look. So it's about working with those managers to motivate and pro provide positive reinforcements. And one of the things that we've been mentioning through our conversations with our clients, especially right now, is the positive reinforcements are the key. If we're not giving um, them with that support, especially for the people that are working from home or even the people that are now going to be at home from tomorrow onwards, it's keeping that positivity and thinking about it'll only be for six weeks, hopefully, and then what are we putting plan to action? Don't worry, we've got it all sorted and we'll work with you to achieve um, success. And then uh, let them know how to deal with different personal, I guess this one is about the personalities and the emotion. Um, during this current pandemic time, as well as the post pandemic is understanding, okay, well, Colin might have taken um, this, this situation over the last six weeks a little bit differently. We might need to spend some more time and effort with him post COVID or during this particular COVID situation, a little bit more um, time and effort to, to help them achieve success. And trust, making sure the trust is there, and then making sure that the team follow the right process and the direction that you're planning to go with. I think, Mayor, it's just uh, so important that, um, you know, and I, I think in small businesses today, you know, you know, don't have to be a manager to be a leader. You, you know, I, I think if I look at the work that we do with some real small businesses that have got four or five staff, everyone's a leader in that business. Everyone's got a role to play. Um, you know, you don't have to go to your manager. Um, you know, you can you, you just take ownership of what you need to do. And I think if we if we simplify those KPIs that I talked about and say, I want you to own this. Um, then they will lead. They'll take, they'll take the leadership and they will lead um, to, to do that. Well done. So ways to motivate your team. Maya, take us through this. Definitely one I uh, am a big fan of because I think the motivation is the key to, to making sure that we're all on the same page and that's why you've got the team supporting you. And you'll really realise the support that you receive during these hard times um, and situations. So, to motivate, obviously be resilient and, and, and support the team on the direction that we want to go through. Startup meetings have been really good, especially in our business with a lot of us working from home. We've had, um, we were originally having daily catch up startup meetings, but we now scaled it back, you know, having that three times a week. And um, it's really brought that uplift for a lot of people to continue on and be like, yeah, we're all on the same page, even though we're not seeing each other day, day to day. 
staff feedback is very important. This isn't a scheduled meeting. This is more about just hearing out what the staff members got to say. So this could be just a general chat through a morning coffee or, you know, um, through a tea break or while they're having lunch or just a general conversation that they might have had an idea or some feedback about how things have or haven't been working. Where the difference between that and the one-on-one -on -one checkups and the welfare check-ins, this is where through, um, and I know I'll separate the two situations being, if you are still trading through COVID, that means that your one-on-ones check-in, okay, how are we going on a weekly basis? Are we achieving the targets and, and plans that we've put in place for the week? Whereas the welfare check-ins are, how's your mental health? How are you, work, um, how are you working during this particular time? Is there anything that um, we can support you with? And just keeping them, showing them that you care during this particular time is really important. I think, just jump in there for Chick May. I think what's important is, you know, this is a question that's been raised, like if I've stood staff down, so they're employed, but we've had to close the business. You know, we've had a couple of clients that are, um, that are unfortunately, you know, they, they have to close. They, they, they can't trade to what's mm -hmm. going on next six weeks but the owners asked well you know can I ring these people just to just, you know ring my team to see if they're okay while they're stood down what's the answer to that question please so so we do encourage that you check in on them uh, there is no I guess a regulation on what you can and can't do but from from a perspective from a business perspective you do you care for your staff so it's really important to, to have that check in it, make, it makes no difference for the people that are stood down. Um, they're still employed. They're still in your business. They're, they're still your, part of your plan. So I believe absolutely make that check-in um, with those particular staff. Yeah, and I think, you know, to me, like a great team, you know, I'm pretty sure the staff are going to check in with the owner as well because uh, it's not easy. I can tell you right now that it is not easy being a business owner um with uh, the situation we're in right now because we feel responsible to make sure that our our team are okay our staff are okay so you know there's a lot riding on our shoulders well done keep going Maya. so we're talking about um tracking the progress of the goal of, and objectives again that could be doing how we're going with certain proposals the plans um where where we we are going with uh, the business and what we need to do we want to be proactive as opposed to be reactive. So it's thinking about, okay, well, we are in this COVID situation, but what can I help my team? This is more of a chance for you to work on the business, on how we can better improve. So thinking about, okay, when we're back to a normal or our normal setting, we know that we've got a plan in place, which will help and motivate those teams to, to be successful. We want to showcase what's been working so that for the businesses that have been successful in staying open in this instance, it will be more about, yes, through this time, even though we thought we weren't going to achieve, you know, we didn't have as much of a plan of attack, but we achieved much greater. We've got one of the clients that um, they didn't have much of an online presence and was a very hands-on retail store, but all of a sudden they've now gone into the online market and, and Coincidentally, that business has now skyrocketed. So it's about showcasing how that, you know, with a little bit of thought and, and listening to that feedback and that you can see what's working. The other thing that we want to work on whilst during this COVID period is about their business improvement. Where can we improve as a business? Work with the team, get them to provide you with those ideas that they've had or may have not have an opportunity to bring them up in the past but now it's okay all hands on deck thinking about where can we go as a business in the future and, and that's been really helpful we've worked a workshop that in our business and it's been quite good um, over the last period of time uh, over the last couple of months and the one thing that Colin has uh, recreated in our business improvement session which was a couple of weeks ago was creating a little um who wants to be a millionaire there or a cahoot, um, but that was quite entertaining, which was quite motivating for the team and bringing them back and checking them back into what our products and services and giving everyone that little bit of a refresh. If I can just um, educate some people on that, what I did was um, we talked about three KPIs per person and um, and then what I did is I did, uh, I think it was 15 or 16 questions of, and played the game. You can actually download the game, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And um, you can change the questions. And that's what I did. And I 
threw a, 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 a few funny uh, funny ones in there as well. But uh, just uh, you know, the whole idea is, you know, how do you do three hour workshop with your team online? You know, like to me, like I like the face to face. I'm sure people out there, you know, prefer that having those conversations. But I, I had to drive a message, you know, remotely to in a way, and then um, that so everyone understood. But then created a quiz to make create some fun that drew drew um, what's the word that drew drove the message I wanted to get across. And at the end of the day, believe it or not, you know that was the highlight of the uh, of the uh, of the meeting. Um, and people still talk, you know the team's still talking about it today. So I think you'll look at ways of uh, trying to make that happen. Okay, now setting those clear expectations. So I'm just going to go and take off on this one, right, uh, Mayor, and then I'll hand it back to you. But you know, setting those clear expectations, I think. Improvement requires requirements to get your company back on track. I think what's important is, you know, this is what we have to do, right? And, you know, I can say it out there that, you know, that my team have been very helpful for clients where people don't want to do things. I made that comment before, and I don't understand why they don't want to do things, right? Because we're in a pandemic and um, they should want to do things to try and keep the business afloat. But, you know, we're all in this together and I think it's important. So, you know, it is important to, you know, you just got to, Talk about those improvements you need to make to get the company back on track. And I think what you can have is those one-on-one -on -one informal conversations, right? So that's those check-ins that, you know, uh, Maya was talking about before. And I think you need to be clear about setting those expectations with them. And I think, uh, again, I go back to you're in the driver's seat, you set the expectations get and make sure that, you know, they understand them and show and guide them on, you know, how to achieve results. So you can't put something that's unrealistic in front of them. You need to do this. When, um, when you know you physically can't. So I think I go back what I said before, go back and have a look, is there any type of trend of what's working in your business and then how do we can excel on that? Um, work with a team to achieve the results, I think is really important. And I think conduct some workshops and training. So unfortunately, you know, we're in this pandemic, business still needs to go. So, you know, um, doing the, uh, there's a lot of people out there that didn't know how to use Zoom or Teams or anything like that, um, or even webinar. So I think what's important is, you know, we're all we're all making change. We're all making change to survive and, and get it going. So you can conduct some workshops and some training. And uh, I also think that you know this is a great time to, which I'll talk about a bit later, to 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 clean up some of the things you've wanted to do in your business and, and delegate that out as well. I think performance appraisals. You know, set some dates for your next performance review. Now we know that. In a pandemic, and this has been very clear to us, that a lot of uh, people that we know are not doing any types of appraisals or performance discussions because we're, we're chasing our tail. But that would be my encouragement is to set something in concrete and do it. And after, you know, at the end of the financial year, I do reviews with my team every quarter. And that's exactly what we did, follow the process, reset our goals for the next quarter and, um, and execute the plan. I think it's important to celebrate the wins. But I also think it's important right now is to um, address those under that underperformance if it's not happening. And I think what we when I talk to a lot of business owners, one of the things that they say to me is, geez, I've worked out who's of my team, who wants to help me and who doesn't want to help me during these uh, these times. And I think, you know, making sure that you protect yourself. And then, you know, if you're having conversations, you know, make sure you do that record keep. So that was our topic of topic two. And now I'm gonna hand over to Maya for performance management because she is the queen when it comes to uh, helping our clients uh, put this in place. Over to you, Maya. It's scaring everyone of you that I am that good at the performance management process. <laughs> well, I think you know, what people need to understand is performance management's not a dirty word. It's about how you grow and, and, uh, and, and upskill your team. It's not about the big stick. So that's right. Um, yeah. And the way I guess before I go into this in a bit of detail, for us, as Colin mentioned, performance management doesn't mean I'm going to kick you out. Performance management means what can we do to work together and where I failed you as a manager or a leader and, and what you can do as a staff member to get onto the same page because we may not have been on the same page and what's our plan of attack going forward. And if we look at the performance management life cycle, there, it doesn't just mean that we're performance counselling or having the one-on-ones. But that, I guess that's a key to, to really identify the differentiations before we get into these one-on-one um, -on -one conversations. So when we're having these one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's more about 
us as leaders and mentors and coaches and you know our, our, our daily dues is making sure that we are supporting the biz the business and the employee for growth um just before i joined this webinar i was catching up with one of um our clients and we we're talking about you know i feel like i failed somebody because i wasn't there to provide them with the the support because of COVID-19. Now that may happen, but it's about, okay, well now since we've identified it, what can we do? So show um, that through one-on-one -on -one conversations, we've identified that concern or an issue, but what are we doing now to import it? What are we doing to show that we care for the success of that person? We also wanna provide them with the clear um, instructions and the expectations of what are we doing going forward? How can we work through that together? And also um, through that is putting a plan in place, maybe perhaps it's daily, weekly, uh, fortnightly or for that particular month. Then we also want to get that feedback and commitment from that person. So it's not essentially us delegating to them, it's us having a conversation about what it is that we expect and get their buy-in, get their thought process of how they're going to commit to you um, to be successful. And also use that for a particular performance conversation if things don't, um, if they don't follow the direction or it happens that we don't follow through with that particular plan, we can use it as a forwarding conversation at that particular time. We can also use that conversation to say, hey, you've done a fantastic job. Um, where we were about a few months ago to where we are now, we've achieved quite a bit. Now we probably haven't got there all completely but i can see the developmental and the growth perspective that you've put into place and the biggest thing that we need to make sure that we do when we are having these conversations it is that we're recording it um, whether it's through a hris system whether it's through your diaries and so forth but it definitely should be kept on file for that particular person yep colin Wonderful, thank you. Um, so when we're talking about the conversations that we have from a one-on-one, -on -one, so in the first instance, it might be just a general conversation. Um, the second time we might have to follow up with that staff member might have to be a little bit more um, detailed as I guess, or put a plan to action. And it's a bit about preparing for that performance plan. So through that plan, have we got to set them the KPIs and objectives? Have we, um, given the opportunity of how we're going to look at their performance so are we going to observe it are we going to look at the customer service side of things um you know your turnaround times and all that kind of uh, processes that fall in line with those particular kpis and get them to um, rate themselves through conversation there are so many different methods now that people go through um, from your basics good uh, meeting expectations not meeting expectations there's one to five um, rating system and there's also ABCD rating system so however they feel like as long as you can explain to them the difference between the rate a rating system it's just for them to acknowledge that hey I have improved or I haven't improved and what am I doing for that also have the manager um, rate them as well to say look you know i can see where we've fallen short or, or we've met those expectations the other way of doing that is also through the pre 360 performance appraisals or performance reviews as um, different businesses call them and that um is having so so might be again through a hra system or a paper-based system but it also allows everybody to talk about how they're feeling that they're meeting um, the expectations of the business when we're conducting the performance review, make sure it's got the, uh, links to the KPIs, the goals and objectives. So if it's a sales target that they need to achieve, do we have that uh, physical figure or number talked about throughout that particular review from a financial aspect? Are we getting, the, um, getting in contact with those customers or what are we doing if we're not customer focused? What are we doing administratively or provisioning or, or servicing the customer to, to achieve the business um, success and outcomes. 
Also, don't be afraid to talk about the behaviour throughout those reviews. Uh, performance is always going to be something that generally talked about, but we tend to forget about the conduct or the behaviour that the person's portrayed during that particular time. Especially during COVID, um, you'll notice that men might have a lot of um, different emotions or, or, or people are going through different situations. So, so addressing that to an extent um, is quite important if, if it hasn't been aligned to the business goals and objectives. Um, and again, through that, make sure that you document it. Beautiful. Yep. So the biggest one about underperforming staff. So this is one query that we've got through a lot of our customers at the moment. How do I under? Uh, how do I perform? Or, or catch up with staff that are underperforming. Understanding that COVID is definitely a downturn in our business, but what have we identified? And as Colin, you mentioned before, you know, you can see who's been hiding or flying under the radar during this particular, um, previously, but during this particular time, you've actually identified that there are staff that aren't pulling their weight or aren't on your, um, through your values and your vision and your plan of attack. So it's really important that we do um, address these performance and conduct issues. So it might be just one issue or multiple issues. I generally tend to say if it's one thing that you're planning to talk about, there is definitely underlying issues uh, regarding it. So making sure that we've got evidence when before we hold these conversations. So we wanna make sure that there's got examples of times, the dates, Saying something like, oh, it happened sometime in February, um, not sure when it was exactly, but it was, um, you know, Colin was, uh, wasn't was uh, meeting targets. Now, generally speaking, it probably would have been towards the early part of February, but trying to align with a particular date, the, the, a summary of the conversations, even if it was in dot point form, at that particular time and as I mentioned having a diary handy or having a HRA system available to do that but it's very important that you have that example then formally invite them to a meeting so it's important that you do uh, whether it's through an email or a form of a letter document to provide them with 24 hours notice before they come into the session and that they've got the ability to bring a uh, support person. And again, we'll probably we'll definitely touch on this in our next up and coming webinar in a lot more detail. So um, we'll explain the nitty gritties in between that. But when we're outlining the concerns, it's about how we also outline the concerns about the conduct and performance. Like I mentioned before, if it's a performance query, specifically they haven't met the target or um, they, due to the lack of them not being uh, available on shift or they've called in sick, now you can't, uh, you can't performance manage someone for being sick, but you can make sure that you manage them on the correct process. So then they also tie into each other. So it's about making sure that we've clearly outlined uh, and explained differentiation between the performance and conduct issues. Throughout that time of that meeting, you want to make sure that you um, give them an opportunity to respond. Now, nine times out of ten, I found that staff don't generally respond and just take on that feedback, but I strongly encourage for them to at least provide you with some uh, information or reasoning to why um, those situations occurred. And and again, hold off on the meeting before you even consider uh, providing them any outcome. But and I generally would stop the meeting, consider their responses. And if it's serious enough, again, hold another formal meeting to d deliver that outcome of that meeting um, before we finalise the outcomes and the expectations of moving forward. So that outcome might be we put them on a performance improvement plan or an action plan, or we talk about, um, you know, part of that you need to retrain on these certain aspects. And then making sure that we've provided them the actual warning letter if you've given them a written warning. Now we could do all this meeting and forget to give them that warning letter. It's very important that you get give it to them and they can choose either to sign or not sign it, but still record on our documents that we've provided them with that. Well, I think, Maya, like we offer a free 15 minute chat line. So if someone's struggling with this, you know, they, we give them some guidance on how to do it. Um, and, you know, in most cases, 
um, you know, we, we're, we're there to help if they want us to, uh, to to help and pursue that and do it with them. Okay, let me take you through topic four, um, so just mindful of time, but thank you very much, Maya. I'm going to go through following the process and system uh, process and systems through this uh, COVID-19. So I think it's really important you set up the right processes. And I talked to a lot of companies, and you know, the first wave of COVID-19, we're all some of us are caught in the back foot. And then what we've done is we've now got the technology, we've now set ourselves up to so people can work from home. So for me, make sure they are set up. Make sure your team or staff are set up correctly to work from home and ensure they've completed you know, a workstation checklist. And if you don't know what that is, you can go to our website and download one. We have a free, uh, we have a checklist there. I think, um, you know, do you have the right uh, technology and access to drives? I think is really, really important. So can people get on, get on and, and, and do what they need to do? And what are you going to put in place if that's not the case? Um, and then, you know, accessing customer systems and client information, I think is really important. So I'm working with a client at the moment, they've got their staff at home, their current CRM system's not cloud, so they've got to dial in and it's dropping out. So it's ineffective and, the, you know, it's frustrating for the business and it's frustrating for the staff members. So it's important you've got to try and get, get that up and running. As part of your goals and objectives, have your staff work on projects together, and we're doing one at the moment. So we have a CRM system. I have Sarah and um, Marie through my business. They're doing a project. They're doing it behind the scenes, and then we're going to, uh, to go back and, and talk to the team and go, right, this is what we want to do moving forward. So it is a good time to get some things done that you need to get done in your business and delegate some tasks. So even if your doors, and it's a question, if you know one client, you know their their doors are shutting but they want their staff to work on things internally that's going to improve the business over the next six weeks. So I think it's really good if you can do that. Using the uh, the team meetings via, you know, the meetings via team or Zoom is important. You know, we, uh, during the first phase of uh, COVID-19, we did a startup meeting at 9am every morning. Um, we needed to check in in the afternoon. Today, because we're very much in the zone and we're in a rhythm, good operating rhythm, we do it Monday, Monday uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, but that doesn't stop other colleagues talking to other colleagues to um, to on uh, working on projects together. Um, if implementing new process and procedures, make sure it's documented so you can use it for future training or induction if someone's starting. And I think one thing that COVID-19 has done is forced us all to make changes. So you need to embrace this um, and create a working solution for the future because I can't see it going anytime soon. So getting the best out of your systems. I think review your current systems, what's working and what needs improvement, I think is important. And it's a good little exercise to do that with uh, with your team. And um, you know, I do a lot of this in companies where I go to managers and, and, and staff and ask, tell us what's working, what's not working, what would you do to improve? And I always say that 90, 80 to 90% of the answers of what to do actually lies within the business. You've just got to extract it. Make the changes so your teams can uh, work more effectively, be proactive and link back to your goals and objectives. So we're doing this because we want to achieve this, this and this. Go back to the basics. I've talked about the AFL football again, a footy team goes back to the basics. Start again if it's not working. Reframe staff from on, um, uh, sorry, retrain staff on company uh, systems if needed, because you know I think that's important. And again, it's a good time to update any client information on your CRM. If you're going into an online platform, you need to make sure that all the email addresses and everything like that is uh, is, is important. And it may be a good time to do a, some sort of survey of your staff or your customers for better business improvement. And I think the communication will deliver, you know, why clear communication will deliver good outcomes is, is for me, it's you need to be assertive for giving that in clear communications and don't make those quick or irrational or emotional decisions that um, that could impact um, the business. Let your communication, I think, all go back to your goals and objectives and that's why it's important you need to do that and link it to a strategy. I think if we're proactive and we check in on the team members for certainty, um, then that's going to create good collaboration. And I think, you know, make sure your expectations are linked back to those updated KPIs if you need to do that. Staff, um, uh, team up staff so they hold each other accountable. So when you're working remotely, it's very hard for one manager to I mean, manage 10 people, but it's very easy for two people, to, one person to manage, uh, two people to manage each other. So it's like, and then, and then lead it back up. And we talked about that before about the leadership. And I think link it back to the, you know, to the performance of expectations of the company and staff. Okay, my topic five is around minimising the risk during this COVID-19. And I think 
number one is you've got to follow the government rules and compliances. So those, those temperature checks, social distancing, wearing all the protective gear. Yeah, I think it's amazing that, you know, um, if someone says, I don't know what to do, you, you, I don't know how you could, could not not know, right, because of what's on the news and everything like that. I think rules for working on site and off site, you, you've got to follow the rules and make sure that, you know, that in, infection control, hygiene, sanitise, wash your hands is all, all done. And, I, and as an owner, you are responsible to protect your staff and I think um, customers and, and your community. So I think it's really important. And I, I was having a conversation with somebody today and they, they, you know, we talked about, you know, having, um, you know, checking your staff so they don't, um, you know, so, so, so don't bring COVID into your business. I, I think most staff members would be horrified if they did that and, and infected their colleagues. So we want to make sure that you do everything you possibly can to protect your brand. I think putting things in place to minimise staff and customer risk. So again, going back to those clear goals and objectives with every staff member, you know, make sure that they understand the updated KPIs given of what you need to do. Everyone needs to follow a process and your procedures to deliver on great customer outcomes. And if they're not, then obviously mistakes will happen. So discuss the behaviours expected to get the job and discuss teamwork expectations to make a difference. And should something go wrong, address it immediately. And look, people will make mistakes, especially working from remotely. So I'll say like, don't be too hard on them. As long as they learn once and don't do it uh, over and over again, I think that's important. And as long as it's not costly. Again, I re-emphasise, celebrate the wins and thank you staff for the great team effort because we've just got to stay positive. So protecting your brand and reputation to me is everything. So let your customers know you're still in business or you or advise them that you know when you're reopening if that's what you need to do because you just got to let them know we're here. Um, communicate to your customers and your local community I think is really really important of what's going on. Showcase how you're staying in, in business I think is really really good through your social medias and stuff like that. Don't make promises you can't keep and check in on your customers. The, you know, are you, the are you okay call is the easiest call to make. So what it, what it takes to make a difference, you know, to, to do what it takes to make a difference and go that extra mile, work together as a team to, you know, achieve what you want to achieve um, with your goals and objectives that's discussed in this, uh, in this webinar. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of the webinar. It's a little bit long. If you need any checklists or help, or help, please go to our website, click on this link, and there's some there's some there's a checklist there. Um, I don't, Samritha, do we have any um, questions um, um, that have come through? Uh, yes, Cole, we've got um, a few questions. So uh, yep. Natasha is asking as to what non-monetary benefits we can offer our clients over the next six weeks. I think this is a very interesting question and I'll, I would love to know what's your take on that. Non-monetary um, to our clients? Yeah. Yeah. Look, um, non-monetary. I think. Well, I think to me, the checking in if you're okay, I think is really, really important. So, uh, um, you know, that that phone call because you know you're not it's not monetary or, or social media. Yeah. You could do a survey or something like that to your clients. Have I answered that question right? Yep. Um, also, resources. Uh, what do you think of that? Like just giving them some resources or checklists or downloads just to keep them updated with the recent, you know. Well, I think if we if we if I go back to this slide here as a good example, there all these documents yep. are free, so they're yep. checklists that people can download for free. I think that's really really good. And you know what's yep. come of that? You know, if I go through to Survive and Thrive, you know, we've had a lot of a lot of downloads that have come through um, where we've now got we've employed somebody to follow them up because of it's created an opportunity. Yeah. And if I can if I can add what I found more or less now, a phone call is good a video call through Zoom or Teams or anything like that is better because the personable um, side of things is much greater because you do see that emotion on their face and you do pick each other up. It's more about the kind of conversation that we have when we're um, communicating with them because sometimes it's all they want to do is vent. You know, they might have a crying baby um, or they've got kids that have been, uh, you know, uh, spending a lot of their day and just sometimes saying, I understand I could feel you is there anything I could do the part of it is there anything I can do sometimes that sentence That's yourself fun. is quite powerful yeah I agree <laughs> very good any other questions Mal? um so there's another question but that's my question uh do you still have time to take that yeah sure yep Okay, so there's a lot of chatter around stand downs, redundancies and dismissals, right? It's all of the news. So I just wanted to know that 
I mean, I just thought it might be useful to know your take on redeploying a staff rather than letting them go. Because you spoke about pivoting, you spoke about innovation and all that. So just in those lines, can you just, you know, elaborate well, I, on redeploying? I, I, I think, look, we're doing that with some, some clients now. You know, I think it's, it's, it's I think what's really important is is explaining to the the you know your, your team uh, and and individuals of this is what we need to do to survive. So that we need to you know you've got a great skill set here, you've got great knowledge, but we need you to go and learn to go and do this. And I think you know it's having those conversations. So rather than get rid of somebody, how can you you know what's the word um, retrain them in another area? And especially if I've done like five or six years with you, I, I, I know to me like if you had a long term loyal employee and their attitude was fantastic, and they're just trying, yeah. and yeah. they realise. That, you know, and it, you know, and sometimes, Samaritha, it's not just the fact that it's you know it's permanent. It might only be for the next three months or or six weeks or something like that. So I think having that conversation, I think, is mm. really really important because the last thing you want to do is and 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 a lot of people have made mistakes where they've jumped too early and got rid of people and then realised, oh my gosh, look what I've done. I've just created another problem. So I think it's important. I go back to having that clear plan in your head of what you to do what to do um, I think it's really important and I know um, you, you just put out a blog of recent um, which I've talked about you know setting that right pathway um, it's on our website and also some questions you know that people are asking us around what to do in this COVID-19 I think is uh, it's on our website and our blogs to, for people to have a look at so um, so I think you know you know resources you can look at as well as Safe Work Australia you've got the um, the COVID risk uh, uh, register download there are safe plans everywhere that you um, that you need to uh, look at and be in control and again if you don't understand them then you know I'd say contact us give us a give us a call or book in a free chat or, or a Zoom or a, or, a, or a Teams meeting I'm more than happy to have, to to help out, especially the residents of uh, the city of Mooney Valley, because the city of Mooney Valley want us to help the the residents, uh, um, and the business owners uh, of this uh, of this area. Now, our next webinar is on the 17th, and it's and it's taking this to another level, which is around handling that performance management and getting it to that next level. So, if you're interested, please come and join us for that webinar. But I just really want to um, thank the city of Mooney Valley, and, and for those people who don't know. You know, they've, they've already given away $200,000 worth of grants to date, which I think is absolutely amazing to local residents. And, you know, for me, I, you know, I think one of the things that's, you know, there was a message was given to me is, you know, make sure if you, you know, you apply for a grant that you're actually trying to help other local businesses within the local in the city of Mooney Valley. So if you're putting a grant application in and you want some money for a website, make sure it's somebody local, not somebody who's in, you know, interstate or overseas or something like that. So they're, so they're really favouring, if I can say that, um, the grants that are coming in where it's local money staying with local businesses. I just want to uh, put that out there. Um, they have another web uh, webinar, which is uh, next Wednesday on the 12th, uh, which is about building resilience. And, um, you know, and that's uh, from 1 to 4.30 p.m. So it's a long one, but um, um, it's a uh, three and a half hour workshop. We'll show you how to, um, you know, place a practical plan and follow an event to a uh, threat of uh, to a threat of your business. So I think, um, you know, save your spot, get on board, get on board with the City of Mooney Valley. They're fantastic people there. They really do want to support local businesses in in, in our local uh, community. And, um, and they, the team down there will do whatever it takes to try and help um, um, local businesses stay in business. I think it's really important. And I come um, and for myself, you know, as the owner of Key Business Advisor, I'm very grateful that the city of Mooney Valley, um, that it, um, you know, believe in us and like what we do and allow us to uh, to host this webinar. And, you know, they, they also promote our other webinars, which I think, and services, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So to finish off, we want you to stay, stay home because it's going to save lives. And we just want this pandemic to be over within the next uh, six weeks. Uh, fingers crossed and reduce the numbers. It was terrible today. I think 725 people, 15 deaths. That's not the way we want to live life. So uh, we need to do what we need to do just to uh, to 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 get to minimise the risk. And um, and we also need to do what we need to do to try and uh, stay in business as well. But stay at home, save lives because that's what it matters. So thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed the webinar. Thank you very much to uh, to Maya for supporting me on this webinar. You're always fantastic and uh, very passionate about what you do, along with the rest of the team at KBA. 
and Samritha for making sure that all that technology works at the back end. So thanks very much. Enjoy your evening. Um, tonight is the last night that you, uh, for many businesses, that they can be in. So we've now got to pack up our off. I've got to pack up my office. So the rest of the staff are at home and uh, and move home. So uh, thanks very much and uh, have a safe uh, and stay safe. Back.